Hi, everybody. Greetings from Clashine. I can see from some of your comments already that clearly the weather uh, is pretty harsh in different parts of the world. We actually had uh, a lot of ice here in Ireland this morning and then the sun came out and it was beautiful, but there is unsettled weather uh, forecast as well. So if you are just joining for the first time, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Nicola Brown. I'm a textile artist based in rural Southeast Ireland. I'm an eco printer and a felt maker, and I grow my own vegetation for coloring my textiles. So I'm absolutely passionate about sharing how I do this. And I work primarily without using any traditional powdered mordants. So the tech that I use for eco printing is called eco printing in the dirty pot. So please feel free to drop a comment. Let us know where you are tuning in from. And actually, I don't seem to have sock with me yet tonight. So I will have to um, keep looking through your comments and your questions uh, myself for the moment. So please, if you have a question about anything that we covered uh, in the boot camp that was wet felting to eco print or eco printing to wet felt if you have any follow-on questions from that content you may not have been live each day please just drop them in the comments and if you can put three question marks in front of your question and at the end of your question it will be easier for me to actually find them in the chat so i'm also going to give more information about the club and um, that's wonderful. I'm just so excited that um, so many of you have already joined. So I think I'm just going to do a little bit of a recap um, about a couple of things, just so that those of you who, who missed at the beginning can actually see some of what we covered earlier in the week. So at the beginning, I was chatting about wet felting to eco print. And looking back over my responses to a survey I sent out recently today, what I have discovered is that um, many people are wondering about how to shape and to firm their vessel up and how many layers of fiber it needs. So I just wanted to say that um, this particular vessel, it only has three layers of fiber. And I keep felting the piece until it has got absolutely no more shrinkage available. And then um, when that happens, it, it, it holds its shape very well and then I can print it. So um, that particular piece has just got three layers of wool. And if you're deciding you're going to make a piece of felt that you would like to eco print it's important to use all natural undyed wool when you are felting it because in that way your eco prints are going to stand out on the surface the absolute best so another thing that um another question that i am often asked is what is the best vegetation to use and i see already here um there's a question here from um, Nini here about um, what's the best variety of eucalyptus. So there are many different eucalypts and many of them give fantastic red prints. But some of the ones that are the absolute best are eucalyptus cordata and parvifolia. They give very reliable red prints with about two to two and a half hours in the pot. Um, but in relation to um, other leaves, it's a question of trying them for up to five hours. I do have some videos on YouTube that you could check out and I will be uploading more with information about individual um, individual eucalyptus trees. So I just see um, Liz has a question here about finding, um, about purchasing silk and woolen garments. Um, Liz, that's not really a question for here because this is really about eco printing to felt and felting to eco print. But it's certainly something, I mean, um, I find that asking friends, many, many people throw out things or they have them in their wardrobe and they would be just absolutely delighted to fob them off on you. Um, 
you just have to keep looking in the charity shops. They honestly are there to be found, but you just have to keep looking, asking around, saying to people in the charity shops, can they get woolen blankets for you? Because often, certainly here in Ireland, they keep them for people with dogs. They don't even put them in the shop. So there are different things, but I'll give plenty of tips in the membership as well once we get to that stage um, about that. So I'm just going to um, flick through to the next one. So if you are a wet felt maker and you are um, felting and you don't use any embellishing fibers on your felt, the, the end result will look very matte. So this piece here, as you can see, it's got a very matte surface, but there's plenty of life and liveliness in the surface detail as well. And that's coming from the background color in the pot and the areas of the areas um, where there is no vegetation. Now, I do have a question from Nini, and Nini, the answer, Nini's asking me, could I write their names in the chat? I'm sorry, Nini, I can't talk and look at the questions and do that. But if you, um, are you a member, I'm wondering now in my um, group on Facebook, because um, if you're a member on my Facebook group, you could ask me that question there. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong um, one here, but it's just impossible, I can't, um, I can't talk and read your comments and answer questions and write at the same time. So I do have a Facebook group that everybody is welcome to join, regardless of whether you're in the membership or not. And it's just um, that's the, the details of the group. And that group is specifically about eco printing in the dirty pot and felt making. So that's where you can ask the question. Plenty of people will chime in and I'm also happy to answer. But I need a few couple of weeks to really um, get the membership off to a flying start and recover. So I won't be that active in the group, but I will be very active with members over the next couple of weeks. So when you're felting and you don't have any embellishments, you have a very matte surface. But if you are actually going to wet felt and you would like to eco print, I recommend choosing cellulose fibers as your embellishments. And you can think about cellulose fiber as coming from plants. So things like bamboo, tencel, which is actually from eucalyptus, banana fiber, linen, viscose. You can get viscose embellishing fibers. All of those fibers come from a plant. And some of them are simpler than others, whereas um, viscose is very much more man-made, but it still has its origin with a plant. So the plant-based fibers do not take the color as well as the animal-based fibers, such as wool and silk. And for that very reason, this is when we're working without a powdered mordant, when we're working in the dirty pot. So for that very reason, if you use them, I'm sure you can see on this piece here, you can see the lovely sort of white tracing there on the surface of that felt. This specific piece I actually was setting up at an exhibition in Enniscorthy Castle this morning. So um, I'll post pictures to the group once um, the exhibition opens and um, you can see the full piece. It's a very large wall hanging, this piece. But you can see that white on that and that is because that is um, tensile fiber and it didn't take the natural dye from the eucalyptus leaves very much in the eco printing pot. Then when you move on to this slide here, you can see that there's also a like almost a shimmer on the surface of this piece. And there are those white wriggly bits. So the white wriggly bits are from Tencel and the shimmer is from Firestar. But what is really interesting is that this is the reverse of the piece that I showed you at the beginning. So you can print on both sides of your felt or of any of your pieces, and they can look totally different on both sides. And that's really good to know if you make clothing, for example, because you might choose to print something that's fully reversible, and then you can have a totally different look depending on which way out it is. So again, that is, you know, folding things and the design aspect of pieces. That's going to be something that I, I will go into in a lot more depth in the membership if that's what people would like me to do. Now you can also add a layer of fabric into your wet felting layout and you can get different surface effects when you do that. So 
all these pieces were created in natural undyed wool and then they were eco printed afterwards so in this piece i used some ponge silk that's like a habitat silk and combined that with the wool and embellishing fibers this is nuno felt nuno felt is a very very fine lightweight felt it's got a much higher percentage of fabric to fiber. So this particular piece is, is a very light Ponge 5 Mame silk with very, very little wool fiber, and it's got plenty of embellishments. And again, this piece is reversible. And in fact, everything that I do uh, in general is reversible. So this particular tunic, which was sold to a leather artist in Australia, this tunic has a V in the front and a kind of a curvy back, but it can also be worn with the V at the back and it can be worn inside out, the other way out. Now, when you are choosing to incorporate eco-printed fabric into your felt, there's a big difference to how um, I work. Well, the actual technique of felting is the same, but if you want to show off your eco-printed silk or wool fabric, it's much better to choose a strong background color. If you think about um, when you're a child and you're learning to paint, if you use white paint, it dilutes the color and makes it paler. And that's really exactly what happens if you use white wool behind your eco-printed fabric. It dilutes the surface color of the fabric. Whereas if you use a strong color behind, you can really, really emphasize the prints and the color. And what I like, if we go back to this one here, you see more subtleties when you felt using your eco printed fabric and it's a great way if you have pieces that you're not really happy with it is a great way of using them and ending up with something absolutely beautiful and if you'd like sharp outlines if you use something called freezer paper you can actually iron that onto your eco printed fabric silk in my case here cut the shapes out uh, and then you just peel the paper back and then you have very crisp outlines for your pieces. And here's another piece with different colored, um, different colors at the background. And this particular piece, I made something called pre-felt first. So that whole section in that, that, that's got that more orangey background, all those are, are individual pieces of felt. This is a very large wall piece. So all those are individual pieces of felt and they were they were incorporated into different colored backgrounds, not not orange at all. So the backgrounds were purple and pink and raspberry colors. And I started felting them. And when uh, when the felt was coming together and the wool fibers and the silk were combining and it started to shrink, I stopped the felting process at that stage. And what I then did was I dried the felt and I made a whole load of batches like that. And so it was barely holding together. And when I came to actually make this piece, then I was able to cut those pieces of pre felt. It's like halfway felted. I was able to cut them into those long rectangular shapes and then include them in the layout of my, my piece. So. I'm just going to check the comments now and just see, are there questions about anything here that is urgent right this minute? Paige is saying, <laughs> tuning in from Denver, uh, can't wait for spring and a new start. Yes, hi from Berlin. Um, Claire, I'm really sorry, I cannot talk and read and answer questions at the same time. If you join the... Um, if you join the Facebook group and you ask me that question in a week or two, I'm very, very happy to share the names um, of them, but I just cannot write and do everything at the one time while I am here answering your questions and talking. Um, Woohoo, Sylvia, I will see you very soon. Um, so um, you, this question here is about um, the weight of the silk that I use. Now, obviously, in the membership program, I go into all this in great detail. But the higher the number 
does mean the heavier the weight of the silk. And as a beginner, if you are eco printing, um, sorry, not eco printing, if you're felt making, often people say you need to be able to blow through the fabric and have a very, very fine fabric. Pongé 5 is very easy to, to Nuno felt with, but I Nuno felt up to um, Mame, um, 14 Mame myself, and I also sometimes add multiple layers of, of um, fabric on top of each other and do mosaic-like effects, and all of that I will be covering in the membership program. And um, Sylvie has a question, um, so about the orange borders. So I'm going to add that back to the stream. So. Sylvia, it's not going to be, I don't know how big a screen you're looking on this, but the sort of golden orangey color on either side of that sort of flowing brick road, that is also felted, but that was eco printed silk, a very, very, very large piece of eco printed silk. So that's why there's that sort of mottledy color. And then I use the same orange merino behind that silk and also behind the bricks. So that orange sort of pulled, um, the intention was that the orange fiber would pull everything together and make it cohesive. So it looked like one piece, which it did. That actually got into our national craft awards, but it didn't come anywhere, <laughs> but it got through to the final stage of them. Um, so the, it was eco printed silk that was eco printed in the dirty pot. And then I wet felted it. So um, maybe I'll just add this here to the stream and then I'll go back and look at more questions in a minute. So um, here we have eco printing in the dirty pot. These are just a, a few slides from the other day because I am conscious that some of you may not have um, been able to watch the other videos yet. So when you're eco printing, whether it's eco printed felt or whether you're working with silk or wool or anything or cotton or linen, it's very important that you soak everything overnight in water and make sure that it's totally, totally saturated. And then you wring all that excess water out. And the reason for this is that if you work with fabric that has been soaked overnight first, that fabric is going to be very much more receptive to uh, absorbing the dye color. Now, it was marvelous American textile artist, Joan Morris, who taught me that. I was doing a week-long residential workshop with her all about natural dyeing using mordants and also using Simplicos, which is not a metal salt, it's a plant-based mordant. And she taught us always to soak our pieces for a minimum of one hour before we mordanted them. And then before we, you know, they were mordanted before they were dyed. So I just brought that bit of knowledge home from Portugal. But I found if I soaked them for one hour before I printed them, they absorbed more dye, more natural dye than if I didn't. But I found if I soaked them overnight, they were even better. So I'm just giving you tips here that I have learned myself through the years. So if you're working with fabric that you've bought or, or upcycled clothing or anything, don't use, I don't recommend you use any proprietary um, liquid for washing it. I recommend that you make your own liquid um, or you hand wash them using a bar of soap. Olive oil soap is my recommendation. And so um, the I have a little video up on YouTube and I'll probably pop it into the membership as well so people don't have to go looking for it, but it just shows how I would make that soap because I find it really wonderful. The problem with even eco-friendly, environmentally friendly um, laundry products or things that you might buy commercially to prepare fabric for dyeing, some of them have stain blasters in them and uh, the, particularly the detergents. So you don't want to strip color out from your pieces. You want to make sure that you give it the best chance. And this is really, um, it's important to say if you have a recipe, now I'm an intuitive cook and I'm pretty much an intuitive eco printer as well, but there are some basic principles. And if you don't follow those principles, you're just not going to get the results that um, that you want to get. So it's really important. Eco printing in the dirty pot is like you've got a recipe, and if you if I if I say 
the best result as a beginner is from an aluminium pot um, with rusty metal, vinegar, and you use onion skins. If you then come back and you tell me, well, I used um, I, I used a stainless steel pot because I didn't have aluminium and I, I, I put it on a wooden dowel and then I saw other people had good results with maple, but I'm disappointed with my prints. You, you didn't do anything that I suggested you do. If you don't follow a recipe when you're cooking, you're not going to expect to get the results that you would get if you followed the recipe. So eco printing is the very, very same, I have to say. So um, Tammy has a question here. Let me just remove that for a second. Um, uh, let me see here. Oh, hang on a second. I've just put the wrong one up. But anyway, so Jan is asking, do you get crisper prints when you work with a fine merino or a barrack shaft? Um, in general, the finer the surface of your felt, the easier it is to get a sharp, crisp print. That doesn't mean that Bergschaft won't give you a good print, but definitely um, the finer the wool, the better chance you have of getting a crisp print. Um, but then you've got that added texture with the Bergschaft, but but you would, I would say the Merino might give you a little bit better print. Um, Tammy, absolutely, yes, that I, I'll be teaching all sorts of nuanced things in the membership. So there's no need to worry, you'll hear all of that. And I know that my great buddy, Mary Campbell, who will be watching later, probably from New Zealand, she's joined the membership as well. And she's particularly interested in the dry stone wall, sort of wall hanging and stuff that I did. So yeah. Um, so Sylvia has a question here. After soaking over, yes, Sylvia, I try and have the piece, um, it's damp is the best way to say it. It's not It's not sopping wet. If you have your piece too wet, you get blurry prints. So um, I have a series of um, boot camp videos from December. It's called Eco Printing in the Dirty Pot. And um, there are three videos. And video one is absolutely... Um, it goes through the whole eco printing process from the beginning strips it back to the basics. Video two gives all the, um, gives some of my recommended vegetation and I have the names of some eucalyptus in that video, I think. And video three is all about eco printing on cellulose fabric using rust water. So um, if you're getting value out of the video, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell, then you won't miss future tutorials and things. But definitely, um, uh, I have it damp, but not wet. So um, oh, Marilyn, brilliant Marilyn, you won't be disappointed. And it's wonderful if we're doing your, you know, like this is a wool and cashmere jumper. I would wash this in my washing machine with the olive oil soap as well. So I use it for all sorts of things. Uh, here's a, um, a question in relation to onion skins. Um, so it depends what you call good, Nini, because because red and brown onion skins both print extremely well, but I prefer the color from the brown. The brown onion skins give a much more golden color and the um, red onion skins give a more purpley color that can also go to olivey green afterwards after you wash them out afterwards. So for me, I love the vibrancy of the onion skin prints. Now, I think what I'm going to do is just share a little bit of membership information now for those of you who've tuned in for that. And then I do actually have some onion skin eco prints uh, on a little kind of slide thing, which I'll show you in a minute. So let's just um, chat for a few minutes about the eco print and wet felt club. Firstly, I would like to welcome those of you who have already joined me. I'm absolutely blown away. Um, it, it's just been so exciting seeing uh, friends, even if we haven't met already, like Tammy, for example, I feel I know you really well, but we've never met in reality. But this is going to be very much more interactive in many ways than previous online workshops with me have been. There's going to be a different feel to the membership, and I'm just so excited. And, and as um, 
If you're an eco printer interested in working in the dirty pot, this is for you. If you're a wet felt maker who's not interested in eco printing, there should still be plenty of information um, if you're a wet felt maker. So if you think of it like a, a subscription to a textile club or something, um, there's going to be either a, a an annual fee, which there's a little bit of discount, or there's going to be a monthly fee. And you can stop at any time if you choose the monthly fee. So I suppose the big difference between um, the online workshops and the membership is the membership is ongoing. And I'll explain in a minute a little bit about what I'm offering in it. But a workshop has a defined start and end date and it has content and we stick to that content. And, you know, you would make pieces and I would give you critique and I would answer your questions and give you feedback and help you with things. But it's very specific to a, to a topic. In the club, there is going to be an ever growing library of content with tips and tutorials from me, with resources, things you can download. Um, Together, we'll develop a really good database of, of vegetation that prints really well in the dirty pot. Now, I have a lot of vegetation that I know prints very well, but you may well have something um, in your region. For example, Lucy, I'm not sure if you're, you're online now, but I know when I was um, in Tucson before and teaching in Arizona, I was blown away by a tree there that I had never seen before, and it was called African sumac. The prints in the dirty pot from that tree were truly spectacular. So I think between us, we, we'll develop a really good database of leaves that we know give really good prints, for example. And that's something that we really didn't do in, in a workshop. And with a workshop, I give you feedback on, um, you know, what you're doing. In the membership, if you put something up and I can see, oh, yes, there's something there now. I'm in the studio tomorrow and I could give you a hand with that. I can just record myself doing something. And because it's going to be, um, hopefully, <laughs> a friendly forum, I won't mind if I don't edit the video. I'll just put it up into our private Facebook group so you can see this is what I'm talking about. If you do X, Y, or Z, you'll have a much better result than if you don't do X, Y, or Z. So I just think it's going to be very, very much more interactive. And I think uh, it, it's just going to be different. Um, so I'm going to actually put a few slides up, but I'm hoping that you can see these and that they're not going to be too um, small on your screen. So I'm calling it the Eco Print and Wet Felt Club. And my tagline is achieve the results that you have always wanted. And I really believe that there is so much information on the internet um, at the moment. And the internet is a marvelous resource. And you can, you can find almost anything you want on the internet and tutorials in, in many cases as well. But the thing is, if you don't know what you're looking for or you don't have time, that's of absolutely no use whatsoever. So what I would like to do is help everybody achieve the results that they want. And what one member wants may not be the same as what, what another member wants. So that's something that I need to bear in mind. And I've got a few things down here. Um, and as I say, you may not be able to actually um, read all this if you're looking on a tablet, but I'll just go through a few things. So you know, this, this is in, in relation to eco printing. Um, you know, are you interested in stripping things back to the basics to learn and implement processes that will give you successful outcomes time after time? Because if you strip everything back and you understand the basics perfectly, at that stage, then you are onto a winner because then you can start adding more vegetation and you've got a base to start from and you can experiment. And I think that's really important. So I'm going to keep things very simple. There will be loads of video tutorials. There will be text for people who prefer reading rather than watching a video. And you can download, you know, checklists and things like that. Um, yeah, so I'll strip things back to the basics. Everything that I teach, all my own eco prints, they're fully washable and many of them are very colorful. It might appear from um, some of the slides I'm sharing that everything is golden and brown, but it, it's not all golden and brown. And I certainly know which leaves give green and purples and things as well. It just happens that that I don't really have any pieces at the moment here that are in those colorways because they've all sold. 
So um, working in the in the dirty pot, we're not working with um, traditional powdered mordants, the metal salts. We're using the power of the pot as the mordant. So it's a health conscious and um, it's an environmentally mindful way of working. So many people come to me um, they discover me after they have issues and concerns about working in more traditional ways. And that's how they often find me. So if you're interested in being more health conscious and environmentally mindful, um, this might be for you as well. Um, so you might have just always worked with powdered mordants. And I'm just looking at a few of my other things here. There'll be loads about upcycling garments and different ways of folding things to getting different effects, eco printing on paper. Um, maybe you might be interested in growing some of your own plants for eco printing and other people I know are very concerned about the design aspects how to lay out your vegetation to get the best um, effects that will be very very high on my list of things that I will share on an ongoing basis but maybe more of you are interested in um, your own clothes making clothes and things and there's a very very big um difference it's really interesting there's a, a quite a difference between printing fabric and then incorporating that in your clothing or printing clothing so i will really really go into that in a lot more detail and share pieces that i've made myself and um, i'm very excited that i am going to get more studio time shortly because I have three meters of the most beautiful silk velvet that I got from Marion, beautiful silks in Australia, and I want to make myself something really nice. So I'll share that whole process with you um, once I get to make that. So then um, in relation to wet felting, you might've had a bad experience wet felting um, and you'd like simple step-by-step -step guides about achieving successful results. Um, what often happens with people um, and wet felting is they don't necessarily work with correct fiber at the beginning or they buy fiber because it's cheap and it might be just suitable for needle felting or using a stuffing for something or they haven't felted the piece firmly enough when it falls apart and they think this isn't for me or it's very hairy. Um, again, I'll strip it back to the basics and we'll progress from there. But you can do super sophisticated Nuno felt, et cetera. And that will definitely be something that I am going to share how I make my, my felt. But let's say you've got health problems. Um, maybe you might be interested in felt and you would like to felt, but you can't physically do it. Well, eco, eco printing on felt is just such a marvelous thing. It's a pity not to felt if, if you would like to, to do it. So I utilize the power of a tumble dryer a lot for felting so that gives me all the the lovely hand aspect of it from you know drafting the fibers out laying them down on the table etc etc but i don't have any of the hard work of the rubbing and rolling and some people use an electric sander i have used that in the past but i cannot stress enough that the tumble dryer for me is the way to go. You don't have to use too much electricity, but I'll explain all of that in great detail in the workshop. So let me see what else we have here on that one there. Uh, I'll just make this bigger for a minute and I will go back to your questions in a minute. Um, so um, you might be interested in sculptural felt. Now that is something that really, I have many, many questions. So I had a survey recently when I was asking people what were their top questions I could address in the membership program. And also what were the two biggest challenges that you face. And many people actually um, shaping their vessels and doing sculptural felt was, um, one of their biggest challenges. And then it was also one of the things people were most interested in. Uh, and another thing which was really interesting as well, because it's easy when you're eco printing yourself a lot, it's easy to forget that maybe at the beginning you were anxious with something. So that, that came up time and time again, that people were afraid, you know, they'd made something beautiful or they'd sewn a piece and then they were afraid to actually get started or afraid to eco print it because they were afraid that they would have a bad outcome. But I can say with my hand on my heart <laughs> that um, everybody has results at times that they're not happy with. 
But the fantastic thing about eco printing is if you eco print something and you're not happy with it, you can print it again. And I will show you. And I'm sure people who've actually done online workshops with me before, Tammy, I'm sure you've seen the eco, the over printing. And honestly, you can just get such interest and depth. So you need never, ever be afraid of actually starting. So I hope, you know, with the program, I would be giving you the um, the confidence just to try things and experiment. And so what if it doesn't work? If you don't try, you'll never know. If it doesn't work, just do it again. OK, and so now there are a couple of things here. Um, uh, so this time... I, I'm calling this the founding members launch. And what that actually means is that this is the only time this membership is going to be offered at the price it is right now. And that price is actually $49 per month if you decide you would like to do a monthly membership and quit at any time. Or if you choose to join me, there's an annual membership fee of 490, which basically means you get, get $98 off. Those are American dollars. In sterling, that works out at about um, 360 pounds sterling for the annual fee or 36 per month, if anybody is just wondering what it is in sterling. So the thing about it is the reason I'm offering it at this um, special price is because I'm going to be uploading content and I will have some, some videos from previous workshops and new content uploading it and, and starting. But I would like feedback from you as the new members at the beginning. It, you know, if you feel that the content could be delivered in a better way, or if you feel there's an easier way to set out the library of content, if you feel you need more PDF files, for example, you can give me all that feedback. And as a founding member, it locks you in at this rate for however long you choose to stick with me. And don't worry, you'll get every bit as much information as people who join later on, but you will have that impact on the direction it goes. And there's just not quite the same amount of information in the library when we start, because clearly um, this is just the start. And I have, um, there's an introductory model or, or module it's not exactly a module but a welcome section at the moment with information about different things and for everybody who joins i'm going to host a zoom call on tuesday one at 8 a.m irish time in the morning and one at 9 p.m at night and in that way i hope to be able to catch everybody but i will record the calls so i can answer all your questions but i have here um just a little bit let me just add this to the stream so just to show you what is, you know, sort of it includes. So founding members will get access to a comprehensive library of content. And this will include step-by-step -step video tutorials, PDFs. There will be a monthly live training session with me. So if you have enjoyed these bootcamp videos and you enjoy my style of communication, I think you really love the live trainings because they're just specifically for the members. And you will, after the few first basic ones, you will have the opportunity to influence the direction that we go. And my intention would be to invite some of my good friends Obviously, I will pay them for their time, but to invite some of my good friends and interview them, such as people like Caroline Nixon, Kim Titichai, you know, to discuss certain aspects. Like, for example, Kim is wonderful about design. And because I haven't gone to art college, um, I feel that Kim might be the person to chat about design. Caroline is wonderful at layering leaves. She works a lot um, with Mordens, but she also works um, without. But you might be interested in a chat about um, eco printing with Mordens. So we're not restricted by what we do. And so you will have um, a monthly live training session with me. Then you will have a monthly live question and answer session with me. So that will be two weeks after the live training session. All of these are going to be recorded and you will have access to them at any stage. So if you can't join in live, you needn't worry that you'll miss out. There's going to be a private Facebook group. I will give regular bonus content. I'll be running challenges, etc., etc. So there are all sorts of 
interesting things um, in the membership and I don't want to promise too much and tell you every last thing because I don't want if something happens behind the scenes I don't want you to say oh well you promised x y and z on the 3rd of um, April and it hasn't arrived yet so I'll keep a few things up my sleeve but I think you really enjoy it so I'm going to just go and see now about um, comments and then I'll share a little bit more um, so let's just see um, okay so um Oh, fantastic, Lucy. So I'm guessing that's the African sumac. I, I cannot tell you how lucky you are having that. And also actually out in the desert, I, I did see some um, tamarisk and tamarisk usually works very well with an iron soak. So um, uh, Birgitta has a really good question. So the for anybody who joins as a founding member, your price will remain the same for as long as you are a member. But later this year, I will be launching this to other people, probably in five or six months time, because I want to really develop a rapport with my founding members, because I think you're all special. And it's special for me to get this up and running and give the best value. So when it launches again, it will be $99 per month or $990 per year. And that will be an annual fee. And so if you join now and you, you pay the 49 per month or the 490 for the year, if you choose to stick with me next year, you will have that fee locked in for as long as you are a member. And I will be, um, I'm just gonna put another banner up here. So for example, I just said this yesterday. Um, there will be more getting added all the time because I do more work myself when I have studio time and I discover new things. So there'll be loads about using tannin and iron combinations on fabric that has not been mordanted before. Um, if people are interested in Simplocos, which is a plant-based mordant, we can cover that. Using an organic indigo vat, setting that up, using your eco-printed silk and dipping it in the vat. Oh my goodness, the results are amazing. But using indigo and eco printing on top of organic indigo, ooh, fantastic. So maybe some of you are also interested in natural dyeing using eucalyptus leaves or bark or whatever. So there's just so many different directions we can go once we have the basics. But I need to strip things to the basics so that everybody, regardless of their experience, has a starting point. So... Um, <laughs> I think, Nini, I was at the doctor's for quite a bit of today, and I, I actually confess I was very excited seeing people's, um, you know, a new member has joined your club, but I haven't been able to look at all the names, but I, I do think I saw yours, and you're going to get, I think it's just going to be such a wonderful place with our private Facebook group as well, you're going to make new friends, ask questions in a safe environment, and, you know, what starts in the group you know, stays in the group, but that doesn't mean you can't share what you're learning elsewhere. Um, so, okay, I'm going through the questions now. Uh, so Chicky D, how many onion skins and eucalyptus branches? Great question. And thank you for putting the question marks in front because it's easier for me to actually um, find it. So um, I don't know how big your pot is, but you can have um, eucalyptus leaves and bark in and branches in for several weeks and it will continue to give you good color. So as much as you have, you can put in. The more you put in, the stronger your pot liquid will be. Onion skins do something called exhaust. So that means that they release all of their dye in an individual session. So when I add onion skins to the pot, I don't add the onion skins in until after I have the bundles because otherwise the first bundles in the pot will absorb the dye from the onion skins and then there won't be any left for the rest of them. And uh, Julie, I see your question. I'll answer it in just a second. Um, but I'm just gonna show everybody a few photos here of um, onion skins. So this I just made um, this little kind of um, collection here just to show you that vegetation looks different than you know if you've onion skins in the pot liquid as I did when I eco printed this um, skirt I've got a rich kind of um, 
goldeny color underneath my tie mark. So this is a, a felt skirt with a lot of Nuno, a, a lot of silk texture. It's not a Nuno felt skirt, but there's an awful lot of silk texture on that particular piece printed with onion skins. Um, this underneath that raw fleece wrap, which is a felted wrap, underneath that there's a satin silk scarf and that silk is very very vibrant and that was rolled on a copper pipe and it gave a very very beautiful rich gold uh, orangey color if i had used red onion skins that that would not have been as beautiful i i much prefer brown onion skins myself here are onion skins on a matte silk top so this was very, very, very flat, um, no reflection whatsoever on this top. And um, there was very little rusty metal in, the, in that pot. So there's not a very strong background color to that piece. And here there was a lot of rusty metal in uh, this particular one. So this one, it's, it's a very interesting scarf. I got that from Marion uh, in Beautiful Silk. So it's a silk chiffon. And it was rolled on a rusty metal pipe and it had plenty of printing on it. But it looks so much more abstract because the scarf is so fine. So you don't see the prints very well, but trust me, it is printed. And then you can see, do you see the white dots on that scarf? So they are actually cotton and they're in that weave. They were very expensive. Well, not very expensive, but as a scarf, it was it was an expensive scarf blank to buy but it was really worth it. So you can see how the cotton hasn't absorbed the dye. And that's because it's the plant based and we're not mordanting the fabric. So the cotton is not absorbing the eco printing color and dye and the, um, the silk is. So it's very beautiful, I think. And um, let's just see, and here are onion skins on felt as I showed you that image before. Uh, onion skins on upholstery wool. This piece has actually just been on exhibition in our National Craft and Design Gallery. And it's with an ottoman or a stool. And um, that's a collaboration with the wonderful green furniture maker, Alison Espina. So now I'm just going to go down through your questions. Um, so let me see here. So Julie, an excellent question. Um, so you definitely do not have to be on Facebook to join the membership program. And tomorrow I'm, I, I may actually see if I can, um, because I was at the doctor's today with, the, with this hand that I injured last night. Um, I didn't get to take any real photos of within the platform. The platform that I'm using for the membership is different than previous online workshops. The membership platform is called Kajabi and I'm absolutely loving it. It's definitely quite expensive on my end, but the functionality seems to be wonderful. So what I will be doing is um, all going well, I will stream the live question and answer section, um, you know, trainings to the private Facebook group. So that is the way to join in live. It's just because that live streaming has to go somewhere and I don't want to make our private ones public on YouTube. So it will have to go somewhere. So I will most likely stream directly to Facebook, but I will record everything and then it will all be uploaded into the membership platform afterwards. So if you really have an objection with using Facebook, you don't have to, but I can't urge people enough to join because you will miss that camaraderie and you will miss the interaction between people and sharing pictures of your work and me giving feedback so all the library of content will be in Kajabi you can ask questions I can answer them you can have comments etc in Kajabi and there will be videos there it's wonderful but the Facebook group will be most likely where I stream to. And in relation to the day uh, of the week and time, for people who join the, um, who choose to jump on, in and join the club, that's something that we will discuss on Tuesday when I do an onboarding Zoom call with everybody. There's a very hard deadline for joining the membership. And so the membership is going to only be available until 
one minute to midnight Irish time on Sunday. It's a very hard close because I'm giving, I think, I'm giving really good value at the 49 per month, 49 US dollars or 490 per year. So I want to get everybody started as soon as possible. And I would expect that we will try and aim for um, a day that will suit most people, but that there will be occasions when that will be changed around. And because people are in different parts of the world, for example, America or Australia, I'm going to aim to get a time that will suit most people, but I will on certain months change that. So I don't want people to feel left out, but that's something that can't be, there's always going to have to be compromise with somebody and I can't tell until we all chat exactly where that compromise may come um, once I know who the people are. <laughs> um, don't worry about that. Uh, there are, are plenty of links to all my favorite suppliers in in the introductory section that's already up there in the felt club. So you can just go over there and have a look at that and you can uh, see where that is. And woo, Laura, thank you so much. Um, oh, wow, that's fantastic. Cheers that your husband gave you this as a gift. That's a really, really, really nice gift. So thank you so much to you and your husband. And um, I may have have a glass of wine later. I don't have one now, but cheers. Thank you so much. Um, so, um, Natalie, will it be evenings and weekends? So the membership is not like a class. So it's not as if you're tuning in to a specific class. The membership will have all the content available for you to work through at your leisure or as fast as you want or as slowly as you want. Um, I would anticipate that the um, that the trainings will be during the week rather than the weekend. And I would say maybe on a Wednesday or a Friday, but that is something that I will identify with people, um, you know, with, with members, we're going to have to maybe do a poll and we work out when will suit people the best. But I, I'm personally a member of about five different kind of heavy duty groups at the moment. And I joined these groups, some at pretty, pretty big expense, because I wanted to learn how to deliver the membership program to the best of my ability. So I have been studying so that you're all my beta members and I hope that what I that I can put into practice what I've learned as a student and many of the trainings and things that I participate in are at 2 a.m in the morning and 12 a.m my time so I what I want to do is try and have something that will suit people let's say in America one month that it will be best for them and then the following month the trainings will be more suited time-wise to people in Australia or New Zealand, but I can't guarantee what day it will be. That That's not something until we all chat. So, um, so um, I'm just looking here now. If anybody has any other question, can you please just fling it into the um, comment section, please? Because I think that might be pretty much it. I'm intending answering more EcoPrint and what questions tomorrow oh okay here's one chicky <laughs> so the uh let's just say this is an onion skin here and you know when you're exhausted you, yourself you're really tired and you droop when an onion skin exhausts it loses all the color now i know this is black but when an onion skin exhausts it actually looks like glass afterwards it's transparent all the color drains out of the onion skin and that is called exhausting. So they lose their color, but whatever you have in the pot will absorb their color. So the felt or your whatever fabric you have in the pot that has taken the color from the onion skins and the onion skins have no more dye to give. Whereas if you have eucalyptus leaves and branches in the pot, they can continue to give color for weeks on end. So I just leave them in until there's too much stuff in the pot and I need more space and then I will take that out. Um, so I don't think there are any final questions now, but I am happy to continue ask, answering membership and follow on bootcamp questions tomorrow. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you all so much to those of you who have joined me. I'm just 
I'm really, really happy and I'm really excited. I was up at five again this morning. I, I, I have just so much I want to get organized. But um, yeah, I may see some of you tomorrow. I may not. Thank you to everybody who has jumped on board. But if you have any more questions, do jo join again tomorrow. So thanks a million and over and out from Clashin. Bye.